Well, shalom everyone and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. It is June 26, 2024, and we are excited about the word that we will study on tonight. We welcome you saying in Hebrew, shalom or peace, wholeness, and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We have an exciting lesson to study together on tonight. And I'm sure the Ruach HaKodesh, Hebrew for the Holy Spirit, will guide us through our lesson and give each of us information that will enhance our understanding of the word. So shalom. We're going to give everyone another minute or so to join with us. And then we're going to get into our lesson on tonight. And our lesson for tonight under what we believe is called Torah, T-O-R-A-H. And we're going to get into that on tonight to help us in our understanding of the scriptures. And so let's just wait about a minute and then we're going to get started. All right, we're going to get ready to pray and get started with our lesson. Let us pray. Jehovah our Elohim, creator of all things, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made, and we rejoice. We are glad in it. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and study your word. We thank you for the Ruach HaKodesh that comes to guide us through our lesson, informing us and revealing to each one of us the many facets of the word. And so we thank you and welcome you, Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh. Guide us on this lesson on tonight. And may we forever be doers and not hearers only of the word. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray, amen. All right, so now we're going to get into our lesson titled Torah. And one of the reasons uh, I'm doing this is because when you uh, study or work with others who may not be familiar with certain Hebrew terminology, you realize that you begin to associate yourself with those words in such a manner that you forget that maybe others don't really quite understand what it is that you're saying. And so we use a different translation other than King James, NIV, uh, American Standard. We use something a little different that's based on a Hebrew perspective, which is the language of the scriptures. It's the original language that we believe that Moses, Moshe in Hebrew, wrote down the instructions, which is the first five books of the Bible. And therefore, the more you understand some of the nuances of the language, the more you'll understand uh, what was said, and how that relates to where we are today. So, we're going to get into this Hebrew word, Torah, tonight, and demonstrate how if your perception and your understanding begins to change, specifically regarding this word, law, L-A-W, and the word Torah, T-O-R-A-H, 
then you began to see that the scriptures have enhanced meaning when you use some of the words, especially the Hebrew names and places that are associated with the scriptures. And so we endeavor to do that. So we're going to take a little time tonight and go over this word oral. So let's get to our shared screen. And we'll get to our slideshow presentation. And we began. So this is our lesson on tonight on the word Torah, uh, what we believe and how when you understand better what this word means, then you'll understand better what the Greek word law was trying to translate because it was translating from the word Torah to give meaning in Greek to the concept of Torah. And so most times when we're studying in the various translations of the Bible, we will see the word law, L-A-W, sometimes capitalized, sometimes small, all small letters, sometimes just with a capital L. And so when we see that, it relates to us that maybe there's something more involved in what the translators tried to take from Torah and bring to the Greek understanding. And then from there to the Latin and then to the English understanding. And so primarily most of the translations that we read, instead of the word Torah, which is the original Hebrew word, you will see the word law. And so that conjures up different levels of understanding. And most of the time, we don't really know, other than from maybe a more English perspective, where and what we're talking about with the word law. So to get a better and more full understanding of the original word aura, we're gonna to touch on some things tonight. So as we get into our introduction, uh, we'll kind of elaborate a little bit more on why this is important. Torah and he, yeah, I don't know why this keeps happening. But Torah in Hebrew means literally teaching, which would be a more correct word than law, or instructions, which is a more correct word than law, because law is translated from the Greek word nomos. So wherever in the scriptures it can be, I think there's something like almost 500 times the word Torah was translated law in the scriptures. And so what we want to understand is when we're saying this word, the Greek word nomos and the English word law, what is it referring to? Is it like rules and regulations? Exactly what are we talking about? And the more correct interpretation for Toro, Torah wouldn't be the Greek word nomos, but it would be a word that would mean teaching or instruction. And so many of the times we don't really understand fully what is being said. For instance, the first five books of the Bible are called the written Torah or the written instructions or those instructions that were given 
directly from Jehovah, the creator of the universe, to Moses, Moshe, and he was instructed to write those things down. So when we see Torah, it's much more than a law, laws. It is everything that Moshe wrote down in the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So when we say Torah, it is much more than the first five books. We would be more correct in saying rather than law or book of instructions. Yes, there are laws or commands that Jehovah said we should do. The creator said we should do. There's like 600 and, uh, 613 or 613 laws or places where Jehovah said do. But that does not give you the totality of Torah. So most of the time, when we read in the scriptures the word law, and we conjure up an understanding of law, then we're not getting the fullness of what the scriptures are telling us. For instance, Yeshua says, I did not in Matthew 5 and 17 and 18, Yeshua says, or Jesus says, do not think that I came to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, he says. I tell you until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or yod or stroke shall ever pass away from the Torah until all things come to pass. So we will notice in this that he says the Torah. Sometimes it'll read in English, the law or the prophets. So when that word law is being translated from Torah to nomos, to law, then what we're hearing may be a little bit different than what the scripture or what the scripture is trying to tell us. One thing for certain is trying to tell us we should become familiar with the first five books because it is mentioned over 400 plus times for. So at least if we get an understanding that it refers not just to commands, which would be more in line, or mitzvah, which would be more in line with laws in our understand, English understanding, it would be better to say Torah so that we bring in the Hebrew understanding. And therefore, as we follow in the thread of the scriptures, then by using that word, kind of getting a grasp of what that word is saying, then we'll understand better what the scriptures are referring to when they say Korah translated Greek nomos, English law, much more than the 613 commands are which are called mitzvot, then law. Because we get the frame of reference that law means a specific command. Korah encompasses a lot more. It means those teachings or instructions. So even though in Genesis, even though in the book of Genesis, there aren't a lot of necessary commands or places where law was being something that was translated to Moses for him to write down Genesis 
but the information of Genesis helps us understand the scriptures. So trying to understand the scriptures and where how man got here, who is the creator of the universe, trying to understand all of those things in a vacuum would make us really kind of devoid of what's going on. So to understand Torah, then you're going to understand Genesis in relationship to the rest of the scriptures. You're, on, you're going to understand Exodus in relation to the rest of the scriptures. <clears throat> you're going to understand Leviticus in relation to the rest of the scriptures. You're going to understand Numbers in relation to the rest of the scriptures. And then you're going to understand Deuteronomy in relation to the rest of the scriptures. So in going through the scriptures, whether it's Old Testament or what's called New Testament, that word would help you understand the breadth of what you're talking about as you're trying to go and tie together the meaning of the old and the new, which is just, the new is just a continuation of the old. So to call one old and new is once again using a Greek frame of reference rather than the Hebrew frame of reference, which is basically covenants. So it was a, what? A renewed covenant. So then once again, you begin to get a whole lot of different understanding and you don't come, on, come away from the scriptures with the misunderstanding that the old and new aren't linked together, even though most of the quotations of the new from Yeshua and the apostles were reflected in what we call the old. So we want to get this word Torah in mind to understand that in most cases, we're talking about understanding derived from the first five books of the Bible. In Hebrew, it's Bereshit. After Bereshit, well, just, just that quick, because I didn't write it down. It, 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 it left. Shemot, which is Exodus. Then we have Vayikra, which is Leviticus, then we have Bamidba, which is numbers, and then we have uh, the word for Deuteronomy. It'll come back to me as well. But the important thing to understand is when you see that word law, and we're going to go through some scriptures to point that out, it's usually talking about more than just a rule or regulation. And people will be saying, we don't have to adhere to law anymore. It's now grace. Well, once again, you're not understanding the whole concept of Genesis where grace was continually referred and demonstrated to no matter whether it was to Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, which are called the father patriarchs or the fathers. Doesn't matter, but grace was shown to them in different ways and different forms. And so we get so fixated on nomos that we lose the essence of Torah. So when I looked through my translation. The word Torah is usually capitalized. I didn't find, if any, places where it wasn't capitalized. So it's always referring to a compilation of information, not just a command. If it was with a small t, then it would be go back to a mitzvah, which is why we don't see it that often, because a mitzvah is like a command. And so therefore we won't see it, meaning a principle. We won't see that. Most of the examples of the lesson we're gonna go through, therefore, 
are going to show Torah with a capital T. It's just like going through and finding Lord, capital L, meaning kind of like master. Then when L-O-R-D, all caps, then that means the uh, four letters, yud he vav he of the Hebrew language is where they translated that to be L-O-R-D, capital all caps, means Lord, means the name. And we have interpreted that name from a rabbi scholar to be Yehovah. So we say Yehovah. And we say Yeshua instead of Jesus. Because we get more, Hashua or Yeshua means salvation. And he came to save us. And so he was named Yeshua because he will save his people. Now, let's look at these quotations or verses from the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28, 58 through 61. First, we're going to do a text using some Hebrew wording, and then we're going to use uh, the New King James Version of the text. He says in Deuteronomy 28, 58 through 61, if you do not take care to do all the words of this Torah. So now, once again, you're getting a lot more understanding of what is being discussed. You want to understand Torah, specifically first five books. The things written in this scroll, once again, Moses wrote on papyrus or animal skins and sewed them all together and made a huge scroll. To fear his glorious and awesome name, which we say, rather than the Lord, we say, Jehovah, your Elohim, Elohim meaning God. Then Jehovah will make your plagues and the plagues of your descendants extraordinary, terrible and prolonged plagues, severe and prolonged illness. Verse 60, he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt that you were afraid of, and they will cling to you. Also, every illness and plague that is not written in the scroll of this Torah, Jehovah will bring on you until you are destroyed. So once again, in this Hebrew-centered translation, we see then word the word Torah, where in the King James Version, we'll see the word law. If you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book. So once again, we get an we have a information and we think of book one way, but in Hebrew, they think of book a completely different way. Because for them, a book could be a letter, could be considered a book. And so we see that translation is not a good translation of scroll. And it also takes you away from the understanding of what is transpiring. He says, they say, the Lord your God. We say, Jehovah. Then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sickness. Moreover, he will bring on you all the diseases of Egypt, of which you were afraid, and they shall cling to you. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law. Once again, we see then that we get in an, okay, now what is the book of the law? Is it a whole Bible? What is the book of the law? We know when it says the scroll of this Torah, we can anticipate understanding what that is. That's the first five books of the Bible. 
But when you see book of the law, you may not know what that's talking about. Will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed? So once again, this word Torah gives so much more depth to the meaning of what action is transpired because that in Hebrew is what is going on. We go on, Deuteronomy 31, verses 9 through 11, in the more Hebrew-related translation. Then Moshe wrote down this Torah. Once again, when we read that, we understand that he's bringing all of these first five books together in the form of a scroll. Different animal skins or parchments that were sewn together and then compiled this huge scroll and gave it to the Kohanim or the priest, the descendants of Levi, who was one of the 12 sons, 12 tribes of Israel, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah once again rather than the Lord. And to all the leaders of Israel, Moses gave them this orders. At the end of every seven years, during the festival of Sukkot in the year of Shemitah. Well, if you're familiar with Torah, which means you've studied what this means, then you can be a little more familiar with the festival of Sukkot. And what does Shemitah mean? At the end of every what? Seven years. So every seventh year was called a Shemitah or the time when the land was supposed to rest. And when that rests, that means basically that you're going to not harvest for sale, harvest only to eat. So you're learning how to even be more together as a people. He says, when all Israel have come to appear in the presence of Jehovah at the place he will choose, you are to read this Torah before all Israel so that they can hear it. Now that's a more Hebrew related translation using some of the Hebrew words. Now let's read it from the King James, the New King James translation, specifically taking Greek words and making them English. So Moses wrote this law and delivered it to the priests the sons of Levi, who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Once again, rather than the name, it would say Lord. And to all the elders of Israel, and Moses commanded them, saying, at the end of every seven years, at the appointed time, in the year of release, at the Feast of Tabernacle. Now, most people don't understand the appointed time, they don't understand what that is. In Hebrew, it's Moedim. The year of release, they don't understand that that's Shemitah. And in most cases, may be a little familiar with the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, that's one of the three festivals. If you understand Torah, Torah studies, one of the three festivals that are, all males were required and they could bring the whole family to come to the temple in Jerusalem and show themselves before the creator of the universe. Well, if you understand Torah, then you have a familiarity with what we just read in English, which most people don't understand at all. And then he says, you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Okay, so what is the law? Well, in Torah studies, you will find out what commands there are, which has a different Hebrew word, and what the concept of Torah is trying to impress upon the hearer. We go on to another scripture, Deuteronomy 31, Verses 24 through 26 from a more Hebrew-orientated translation, it says, 
Now when Moses had finished writing the words of this Torah on a scroll, so we have a better picture of what is talked about in this text right to the end. So all the way up, this is almost the end of Deuteronomy, Moses is writing. There'll be some parts before the whole book is closed that indicate that one of the scribes finished this scroll of Deuteronomy for Moses before it was finally given to all the people. He goes on to say, Moses commanded the Levites, carriers of the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah. So if you understand Torah, then you understand a little bit about what's being talking about in terms of carrying the Ark of the Covenant, what that is and what it's talking about. Moshe then said, take the scroll of the Torah and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah, your Elohim. It will remain there as a witness against you. So as this is completed, these scrolls are completed. And he not only gave one to the Levites, but he gave one to each of the tribal leaders of the 12 tribes. Now let's read the New King James. Same text, Deuteronomy 31, 24 through 26. So it was when Moses had completed writing the words of this law in a book. So we really not understanding what, what is that law referring to? When they were finished, then that Moses commanded the Levites who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord saying, take this book of the law. Once again, in our understanding, we're, we're seeing a book, but it's a scroll much different than a book. And it imparts to us as if Moses was writing in a book or pages put together some kind of way tied together and made a book. That's not what was taking place during this time. It was written on animal skins and sewn together. Another scripture, let's look at Joshua now. We're going to go to Joshua 22, verses 4 through 6, the next book after the Torah. So now, you, this is a more Hebrew translation. So now Jehovah, your Elohim, has given rest to your kinsmen, as he said to them. So now, turn and go to your tents, to the land that is your possession, which Moses, the servant of Jehovah, gave you beyond the Jordan. Only be careful to observe the mitzvah. Now that's command, that's law. And the Torah. So you understand that there is a difference in what is transpiring. Torah, which Moses, the servant of Jehovah, commanded you to love Jehovah, your Elohim, and walk in all his ways and to keep his mitzvah or commands. Cling to him and worship him with all your heart and with all your soul. That's a more Hebrew intense translation. Now we go to a new King James Version. Same text. Joshua chapter 22, verses 4 through 5. Now when the Lord your God has given rest to your brethren, as he promised them, now therefore return and go to your tents into the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. If you read the Torah, then you understand a little bit about what's transpiring here to a greater degree. But take carefully to do the commandment that once again is a mitzvah rather than Torah. 
but take carefully to do the commandment and what the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments that would be his mitzvah, which are rules to do and don't do, which become commandments, to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So once again, that understanding of Torah and becoming familiar with this Hebrew concept will make this scripture more meaningful to you when you have studied Torah. We go on. Joshua chapter 23, verses 6 through 9. Almost the end of the book of Joshua. Be very resolute to keep and to do all that is written. Once again, a more Hebrew translation is written in the book of the Torah of Moses, so that you may turn aside from it to the right or the left. Don't do, don't turn. And not intermingle with these nations who are still remaining among you. Do not mention the names of their gods or swear by them or worship them or bow down to them, but cling to Jehovah your Elohim as you have done to this day. For Jehovah has driven out from before you great and mighty nations. As for you, no one remains standing before you to this day. So now they have taken the land of Canaan, a great portion of it, it has been given to the various tribes, and Joshua is now preparing to go to the land for which he has claimed as part of his inheritance as being from Ephraim and we will see that as you become familiar with the book of Joshua, of course, you understand a little bit more what's being talked about in terms of horror. Therefore, in the King James, same verse, therefore be very courageous to keep and do all this that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Once again, our frame of reference, this paints a picture that is not as clear as it would be if you understood horror scrolls, things of that type. He goes on to say, uh, you shall not make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause anyone to swear by them. You shall not serve them, nor bow down to them, but you should hold fast to the Lord, your God. Hopefully it's been explained to you in these English translations that when it's all caps, L-O-R-D, that's a translation of a Hebrew, the four letters of the Hebrew, Yudhe Vave, and another Hebrew word, which is Adonai. And of course, for God, I use Elohim from a more Hebrew-centered translation. So, Again, we see that you get the book of the law as opposed to the Torah of Moses. And it has a different meaning because we're thinking of a book of rules. But there's Genesis and Exodus that brought about the children of Israel coming, going into captivity. Creation stories from the beginning all the way up until the time that they were in that at the Jordan preparing to go across to take the land of Canaan that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Another scripture, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and we'll see something what about this Torah and see how it's in another translation that just says the law. Now, when the time of David drew near to die, he charged his son Solomon, saying, I am going the way of all the earth, so be strong and be a man. That was good advice because he was like 12 or 13 years old, but he had advisors that David had put around him. 
He said, keep the charge of your over your Elohim to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and his decrees according to what is written in the Torah of Moses. So once again, we understand that's a much more complex level of knowledge than law. He says, so that you will succeed in all that you do wherever you turn, so that Jehovah may fulfill his word, which he spoke concerning me, saying, if your children watch their way to walk before me in truth, with all their heart and with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. <laughs> Excuse me. So, that's an understanding. Once again, you get Torah, a lot more meaning is involved. Then when we look at the King James, we see, now the Dave, days of Dro David drew near that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses. So once again, Korah of Moses, law of Moses, and this word law can is capitalized here. So it's implying there's more involved in this word. Well, Torah gives you that understanding because as you understand Torah, then you understand commandments, judgments, testimony, all of these things that are inferred here in David speaking to his son Solomon. We go on. Second Kings chapter 17 verses 13 through 14. From a Hebrew perspective, more translation, more favorable to Hebrew. Yet Jehovah had forewarned Israel and Judah by the hand of every prophet and every seer, saying, turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the Torah. Once again, so we understand that we'll get all those commands and all those statutes as we become familiar with the Torah, which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by the hand of my servants, the prophets. Yet they would not listen, but stiffen their neck like their fathers who did not trust in Jehovah, their Elohim. Now this is second Kings. But once again, that understanding of Torah means we're going to have a well-rounded perspective of what is going on with these kings and what they were commanded and commissioned to do. He goes on. They rejected my statute and covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimony. And he testified against them. Instead, they went after futile things and became futile following the nations that surrounded them, about whom Jehovah had charged them not to emulate. So we see then that according to all the Torah. So if we were reading the old, we're going to get in a few New Testament scriptures as well, but understanding what Torah is, being familiar with Torah study, then you had additional meaning to what is being recorded here in 2 Kings 17. Now let's read from the New King James Version. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all his prophets, every seer, saying, turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your father. Once again, we understand that being familiar with Torah you understand it means more than just command and commandment and statutes. There's also ways of dealing with one another, a whole lot of other things that are included in 
what is being related in Hebrew to these Hebrew people? Their understanding as it relates to our understanding today. Let's go on. Second Chronicles chapter 17, verses 3 through 9. Let's read. Jehovah was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David. He did not seek Balaam, but sought the Elohim of his father and walked in his mitzvah, his command, rather than the deeds of Israel. So Jehovah established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought tribute to Jehoshaphat so that he had great riches and honor. His heart was devoted to the ways of Jehovah. Furthermore, he removed the high places and the Asherah poles from Judah. Then in the third year of his reign, he sent his officials, Benhal, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Micaiah, to teach in the towns of Judah. With them were the Levites, Shimei, Nethanah, Zabadiah, Asher, Shimrama. I guess this should be Yehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, and Toba Adonah, Ad Adonijah, and with them Elishma and Jehoram the priest. They taught throughout Judah, having with them a Torah scroll of Jehovah. So then Jehoshaphat sends the people with the Torah scroll. And it's huge. But they're taking this Torah scroll with them. There could have been some smaller ones, but this is the big scroll. And there may be two or three of them because of the fact that they would be so large. But they're going around now and teaching the people the Torah. Not the law, the Torah. We see the word mitzvah or commands, so it's much more than that. They're teaching them the Torah. Now let's read the New King James. Second Chronicles 17, 3 through 9. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the former ways of his father David. He did not seek the Baal, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments, not according to the acts of Israel. Those that were what? Disobedient. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat, and he had riches and honor in abundance. Remember, at this time, the kingdom has been split. So not according to the acts of Israel. We will understand better, understanding Torah, we'll understand better what's going on here. Of course, Reading Second King, I mean First Second King, you'll understand much better as well. But Torah study will give you the foundation from which all of these other studies are originating. Then he gives the names of the priests, and then he say, "So they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them." So once again, rather than having a Torah scroll, we're talking about the book of the law could be two different frames of reference based on our understanding of those words. Another scripture, Nehemiah 8, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Then all the people were brought in as in a single body into the plaza that was before the water gate. They said to Ezra, now this is from the book of Nehemiah, but Ezra the scribe, was there. Bring out the Torah scroll of Moses that Jehovah had commanded Israel. But once again, he's to bring out the Torah scroll. We have an understanding of what is being talked about. He goes on. So he read from it before the plaza in front of the water gate from first light until midday in the presence of the men and women and others who could understand. And all the people listen attentively to the scroll of the Torah. So many of these people had been, what, in Babylon for 70 or more years. 
So Hebrew, they may not understand completely, but I mean, there's fragments of it they understand, but that's what it means when he said with those who could understand. Because someone would then have to begin to do what? Translate from Hebrew, which most likely Ezra could do, into the language that they were speaking when they came back from Babylon. But once again, when we look at the New King James Version of Nehemiah, we see now all the people gathered together as one man in the open square that was in front of the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Hmm. This happened on the first day of the seventh month. Well, if you're familiar with Torah study, immediately that would bring to mind what's going on. First day of the seventh month. We would know that that is the seventh month would be what? The blowing of the trumpets or signifying that the beginning of the seventh month, which is really kind of like the new year in terms of many aspects of that society, but it's the seventh month. We know that during that month, understanding Torah studies, you would be familiar with what? The appointed times of the seventh month. They didn't have names prior to going off into Babylon. It was just first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh month. Then he read from it, meaning the Torah scroll, in the open square that was in front of the water gate, meaning that they had built back the walls of Jerusalem. From morning until midday, before the men and women and those who could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law, rather than the scroll of the Torah. We go on. In Psalms 1, 1 through 2, Happy is the one who has not walked in the advice of the wicked, nor stood in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scoffers, but his delight is in the Torah of Jehovah. That's the Torah, the first five books. And on his Torah, he meditates day and night. New King James. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law, and in his law, he meditates day and night. And so once again, now we see the word law in small letter. So it's basically like command, or what is misfah, but that's not what's being inferred by the Hebrew. It is the Torah. So the whole concept of Aura is what is being referred to in the psalm. We go to Matthew now. Matthew 7, verses 11 and 12. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So in all things, do to others what you would want them to do to you. For this is the Torah and the prophets. So once again, with that Torah, it gives you a vast array of knowledge that you can add to your understanding of this text. Look at the New King James. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? This is Yeshua talking. Will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Once again, you understand Torah is much now it's capitalized here. So therefore, there's much more added to law. Same word, just with a capital letter. Whereas Torah embodies all that one understands concerning Torah. Let's go to Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. 
And I think this is our last one, but maybe one more. But the Pharisees, when they heard that Yeshua had silenced the Sadducees, gathered together in one place, Matthew 22, verse 35. And testing him, one of them, a lawyer, asked, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the Torah? So now and a person understanding Torah understands a vast array of information, not just the 10, but a vast array of rules. And he said to him, you shall love your over your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Torah, commandment, or mitzvah. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So Yeshua is talking about Torah, understanding a complete volume of understanding rather than just law. But when the Pharisees heard New King James, he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two, the commandments, on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophet. So much greater depth of information from a Hebrew perspective because that's who Yeshua was talking to. Hebrew people. The last one is Luke chapter 24 verses 38 to 44. Then he said to them, this is Yeshua, why are you shaking? And why do your doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they were still in disbelief due to joy and wonder, he said to them, Do you have anything to eat here? They gave him a piece of boiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. Everything written concerning me in the Torah of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So this is a vast array of the complete Old Testament called the Tanakh. And Hebrew people would understand the gist of this information. Let's see what in English we get. And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your heart? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marvel, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And the scriptures were open to them. Then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Well, for English speakers, you see the, the difference in the information that was gleaned just in that one phrase. Horror of Moses, the prophets, and the song, being abreast and understanding a great volume of knowledge was just imparted to the people that were listening to what Yeshua was saying. And so that concludes our lesson. I, I, I wanted to touch on, and we're gonna get into things like this so that we'll have a better understanding of what the scriptures are trying to relate to us, even if you have to go through and make notes in your Bible to become familiar, if you don't have a, a Bible translation that will use any Hebrew words, but uses all English relating back to a Greek word, which does not, as we saw 
with nomos fully render Torah. So it would be better wherever there was law, go in your Bible and write Torah. So that your understanding of what's going on there would be enhanced. With that, we're going to get back, get out of our shared screen and pray. Jehovah our Elohim, we bless you for this day. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for all those that will that were listening in live and those that will come and listen as we post it to our social media. We thank you right now for the Ruach HaKodesh that will guide them as they study into all truth. Now, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord, Savior, and King, we pray this prayer. Amen. All right, everyone. I'll see you for our Shabbat night service. And I say, Shalom.